So my recent inspiration for the kind of experiments which I'm going to be showing uh, partly have to do with a couple of videos that I, I watched a while back about the Cavendish experiment. And, um, and I thought, and I also there was this older video where a mass was dangling by a larger mass, like a big lead ball. And on this very sensitive balance, uh, it, it, it gave a reading showing the change in, well, the gravitational force between the two lead weights. So that was really intriguing. And I, I was thinking along the lines of, well, suppose I could modify that force maybe with a magnetic field around one of those masses. So then I started thinking about getting a, a very sensitive laboratory scale and so that's what I did and also during this time I've been uh, inspired by some of Ron Keita's results with his electrets and the small gravitational shielding effects that he's been seeing and he actually holds a patent on a gravity shielding device so I figure why not why not uh why not do it with a magnetic field if you can do it with some type of electric field in an electret material. So I'm still investigating this. I just have to redesign my experiment to avoid the interaction of magnetic fields with any of the components in the scale or any other objects around the test apparatus. Mr. Keita does diagram in his patent that a magnetic version should work too, uh, where the dielectric is between two magnets. So Ron Keita talks about the uh, the benzene rings and the compounds with benzene in them um, but being so toxic. And I just wanted to try something, something I had on hand. Um, and so I, I was considering these alkane molecules. And I just happened to notice that I had this little lighter fluid container kicking around which has butane in it and butane is a, a long carbon hydrogen molecule and it just so happens that it has these these uh, components of it that are known to rotate uh, the hydrogen atoms on the ends I believe uh, I read in the chemistry in my chemistry textbook that these these structures actually can rotate um, and they have like a resonant property similar to the benzene rings so that's some of my rationale and so I, I just what I did is I put it between magnets like how it showed that simple diagram in the patent so up until a couple of days ago I was really excited about what I'm going to share what I now understand to be most likely measurement errors um, I wanted to just share this anyways because I literally spent hours and hours studying this, learning from my failures and experiences, um, things that are not always obvious. Just a little demo to see with these magnets coming near the scale affect it. And I'm also careful to ensure that these magnets are um, oriented the same way. That's why I wrote up on here. So they're always facing the same way because they'll actually weigh slightly differently depending on that orientation. So that's important. So here's a couple of examples of a bunch of these types of experiments I did where it looked like the weight was slightly different depending on if the magnets were uh, over top or beneath with respect to the material. And so to cap off this video, pun intended, I'm going to show this mushroom that I picked up on a trail near where I live and I'm going to weigh it with the cap up versus the cap down and you'll see that in over these numerous trials that there's a difference in weight which is fairly consistent uh, according to the orientation and so what's interesting too is the, stru the tiny structures there 
on the bottom of the mushroom, uh, it's possible that that could have some sort of quantum effect. I don't really know. I'm not going to get into the theory, but uh, and how it relates to the vacuum and that sort of thing. But it's interesting. It's also important to note that the the top side there, the, with the the cap up, there's more bulk matter. Um, so when that side is facing down, it seems consistent with the idea that it's being exposed more to the Earth's gravity and therefore weighs a little bit more versus when it's the bulk cap part is on top. So it's partially shielded by the tiny fins there on the bottom. And of course there's different theories on what this might be or how to actually explain it. And I'm not qualified to into all the details. But I just want to encourage more experimentation in these things. And uh, any of you want to try this kind of thing, please do and, and let me know. And uh, we just need to, to uh, have more data and keep working on this and let the theories come in time. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to stay updated on, on my work and my progress and these things. Uh, I have more experiments and things to release very soon. So thanks for watching.